Those are astounding stats. Well, it's very frightening and considering that we have a massive aging population, by the time that people in Canada are 80, 50% of us will have some type of dementia or Alzheimer's disease. Great, so be kind of crazyville. Right, but we can prevent I shouldn't prevent say it. crazyville, but you know, oh, it's, it's sad. difficult. You know, the thing is you forget everything. You forget how to do basic body functions. You forget everything, mm -hmm. and Driving, it's horrible for the putting people. Putting on your clothes. Yeah, and the people who it's have to look after you. It's not always that bad, you. but I know I've had uh, my father's uh, had dementia. And it's and sad to watch someone you love. It's a trip, as you know. You know, decline. That's the sad mm -hmm. thing. Watching their memory decline. It's it's very sad, but we can prevent it. That's the key, and we have to understand what's causing it. And then we have to do what we need to do to prevent it, especially, although you know most Alzheimer's is not uh, genetically related, uh, if you've got a parent with Alzheimer's or with memory decline, mm -hmm. you want to make sure that you don't you know, live the same lifestyle that they did. So it's true, most Alzheimer's is not genetically related. That's right, about five to seven percent of it is genetically related. The rest of it, we now know, is caused by inflammation, particularly inflammation in the brain. So when we think about inflammation, if you slip and fall on the ice and sprain your ankle, your ankle will get red hot, painful and swollen. Mm -hmm. That's telling you that there's inflammation going on. But what we don't see is inflammation going on in the brain that causes uh, damage and destruction of the cells that produce memories. Right. What inflames the brain? How do we um, inflame our brains? I'm sure there's many answers. Well, there's a few key things. One is sugar. So sugar is probably the worst thing for creating inflammation in the body. So the really? more sugar we consume... And in the brain, too. I in guess the brain that too, makes yeah. sense. Yeah, because, of course, the brain loves glucose. And so as a result, so high sugar consumption is a big one. Stress is the next biggest one. Can you tell if you're having high sugar uh, consumption by your blood test? I took a blood test. Mine was a bit high, but I had had a few drinks uh, two days before. And my doctor said, you don't have a few drinks a few yes. days before and go get your sugar taken. Right. No, no, no. Well, you know, if it's a few days before, it shouldn't really matter. But if it's the, d the night before, then it's mm -hmm. going to create an issue. But you mm -hmm. should do fasting, blood sugar and insulin, and it does play a role. And people who have elevated blood sugar and insulin who are pre-diabetic or what we call insulin resistant, so you're not a diabetic yet, but you're in that category, are much higher risk of having things like inflammation in the brain and memory decline. Really? Um, in Vancouver here, where we live, we have high amounts of mercury in the air. So we think about mercury in fish, but mercury vapor is also a contributing factor. So, you know, unfortunately, we tell people to eat fish because it's so healthy, mm -hmm. but people should really get their mercury levels tested. It's a simple blood test and find out where your mercury is at because it does play a role. Any of those toxins like mercury contribute to memory decline. 